A 37-34 overtime victory for the Atlanta Falcons has them in sole possession of NFC South. Welcome to the Falcons Audible presented by at and I'm Derek Rackley with my guys, Dave Archer, DJ Shockley. And this question is for you guys watching us wherever you are watching us. Through eight weeks in the season, did you think the Atlanta Falcons would be number one in the NFC South? If you did, raise your hand. Because you probably won the uh, anybody raising don't lie. <laughs> you probably, don't lie. You probably won the lottery too. If you right, yeah. um, guys. What a game, right? Um, you guys were there. We were all there. Mm. Uh, DJ, by the way, you're looking sharp at halftime did, to uh, did, present did. Todd McClure his did. jacket for getting inducted to the Atlanta Falcons Ring of Honor. Congratulations, Todd. I know yes, we sir. talked a little bit about okay. it last week. Mud Duck, a big part of this franchise uh, for the better part of two decades. Um, Here's what we're going to cover in this game. We'll get our reactions. We're going to size up the performance of the Falcons. We're going to talk some keys to beating the Chargers coming to town. And then maybe, maybe we'll talk a little bit about some games that were too close. But we're going to start with the guys are going to do a little game. They're going to finish a sentence for me. Ooh. DJ, you're up first. Let's go. Okay. It's going to be real simple. Finish the sentence. That game was ham. Bananas. <laughs> Worth watching twice. I mean, I mean, I couldn't imagine being on the call like Arch was and the ebbs and flow, the back and forth. I mean, it was an unbelievable game. And I think regardless of what side you end up on, I'm glad we came out on the right side. But this was a game that, you know, obviously was talked about around the entire league. And uh, I'm glad we was able to come out on top, can, but it was crazy. Can I just get clarity? It was it was ham. Ham. And ham. Ham and bananas. Ham. Bananas. Like, okay. It yeah. was it was ham, but it also was bananas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we get a little pre Thanksgiving brunch yeah. or yeah. something. Um, Arch, do you have any uh, food particles that are <laughs> no. that no. game one? No, my, my, mine is more attached to how I was feeling. Emotionally <laughs> exhausted. Okay. Uh, okay. There, there we go. go. Yeah, we got the food. Exhausting. And I'll talk. My, I'll talk about the emotions. It's <laughs> about go. the same thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they go hand in hand. And yeah. I would finish the sentence of that game was wildly entertaining, yeah. no doubt. and it was no uh, doubt. the way that that thing finished. I I couldn't believe it a couple times over. Um, so let's get into it. Let's <laughs> oh, talk man. about some of these positives from let's start on the offensive side of the ball I mean we've been talking about the mantra of this team all season long is they're going to continue to fight no matter what the situation is right and they got faced with adversity again in this game but like probably <laughs> not the way that we thought it was going to happen Dave let me just start with you what were some of the biggest positives you took away from the offensive side of the ball in that performance on Sunday I thought guys stepping up in in and being counted. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously we knew Marcus Mariota has done that. Marcus had to create a lot of stuff Did away he? from the schedule. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of scheduled plays that happened in this game. Um, but Drake was there. Demir Bird was there. Pitts was there. Yep. Uh, Tyler Algier was there. And that's, that's kind of that where you're starting to kind of galvanize the team, right? Where guys step up. We, we talked about that. And there's a bunch of things – as Arthur likes to say, we need to fix, yep. get yep. get cleaned up. Yep. There's a bunch of that, but it's fun to be able to clean that stuff up. We talk about this all the time when you win. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there's some things to do that with. But that's what I saw where guys, when you needed them, guys stepped up and made plays. Um, I agree. And you mentioned some of the performances. I mean, I, I, I thought it was great to see Kyle Pitts in more of a featured role, no doubt. really kind of trying to get them. Now, granted, Marcus probably had to throw the ball a little bit more in this game, maybe than we've seen in games past, but they made a concerted effort to get him the ball. And he made a couple of fantastic catches to keep drives alive and make some big plays. Who impressed you offensively in this game? I mean, the the, the same suspect Arch just talked about. Add Huntley to that. Um, yep. I think he, you know, 80, 90 yards in the ball game. Uh, the physicality he ran with. Yep. Uh, there were two guys that I thought on, you know, these particular plays I thought were kind of a, a microcosm of how good these guys can be and how good, you know, Jake Matthews has been. There were a couple times where they were running outside zone and they got the edge because of uh, what Matthews and McGarry were able to do on the edge. There were a couple times they had some reach blocks and they literally, you have a wide nine 
And people don't know why nine is the defensive end who's outside of the tackle. And you have to reach him and turn him so that the running back can get the corner and edge. There were a couple times where both guys were able to do that. And you can clearly see their butt to the sideline. So that tells you they reached him and then they were able to turn him. And then you were able to turn the corner. Uh, there was one time Caleb McGarry just absolutely mauled the defensive end and literally threw him to the ground, went down after him and hit him again. Just the physicality up front was huge. And I think that's why the run game was big. And you talk about a concerted effort getting Kyle Pitts to football. There were a couple times where by formation, by by motion, they were able to get a one-on-one with Kyle on a couple of those quick slants. Uh, there was one time where uh, you talk about Mariota having to create the play he throws to – uh, he throws to, to Kyle Pitts out in the left flat, and nobody's out there. The Panthers in, like, cover four, and the, 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 the linebacker didn't get all the way out. He comes on a little orbit motion all the way around, and Mariota has to climb in the pocket. And to be honest, when it happened, I had no idea how he even saw him to his left side because he climbed all the way up in the pocket, got dudes all around him, and he throws it to his left while, like, jumping – and Kyle Pitts is wide open, and then Kyle goes for another 35 yards with mm-hmm. well, yards after yards after catch. So it was a lot of good things going on offensively, and uh, I thought guys played to that standard. Nine targets for Pitts, five catches, 80 yards. Did have the long of 33 in the game. You talked about one catch. I know you guys saw this one, and remember, I like the one that he t- he snagged over the middle, got blasted by somebody, got hit really hard. And the dude got hurt. And yeah, he was the one that was still laid out on the. T- <laughs> Yeah. But not only that, like Pitts knew how big of a moment it was, and he got up and it was kind of like first down, like first nah. down. <laughs> it, like he kept telling them it was yeah. first down. Here's the unique part of that play, and Arch, me and Arch's QBs, we love this. This was it was a hard play action. It was a backside supposed to be like a skinny post, little mm-hmm. little bang eight on the backside, and he flattens it off. Yep. And if he doesn't flatten it off, this safety is going to he going probably break this up or it's not going to be a catch. Yep. But the nuance of understanding, I see the safety and I'm not going to keep that same angle. And that's the one where he goes like this because yes. Mariota's throwing him like it's a post, yep. but he snags it out the air and stays flat down the line. And leaves all this open. And right? still, still catches it, bangs <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, just small stuff like that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But when we watch the film, we, we appreciate those type of things. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if you, you talked about the little nuance. You don't flatten that out underneath the safety. That ball could end up getting picked, right? Yeah. But those are things that you – and I will even remember as a reserve tight end when I was playing for Dan Reeves, the little things that you learn with experience in the NFL mm. that you probably get away with in college – just because they're not that good yet, right? Like defensive backs don't play with the same type of anticipation in college that they do in the NFL. But these are the little things that you have to do. Number one, if you want to stay on the field, like on third down or anything like that, but to be elite at your position. If you want to get the football, if you want to make catches, this is what you have to do against veterans in the NFL. Otherwise, they're going to break it up. They're going to find a way to get that football. Hit that that first down again. Hit that first down again. Yeah. (laughs) Got a feel for it. I liked, I liked the passion <laughs> and the excitement yeah. that he showed uh, off of that catch. You mentioned Caleb Huntley, 16 carries, 91 yards in the game. Algier, 39 yards, also got involved in the passing game, catching mm-hmm. uh, a receiving touchdown, which was big for Atlanta. Let's flip it over and talk about the defense because still light in the secondary, but we saw enough plays like Lorenzo Carter before halftime making a huge play. I, rem- I brought my daughter to the game, guys, because it was alumni weekend, right? And... Uh, So she's 10 years old. She likes all the cool stuff. So fortunately, the Falcons put us in one of the club levels. So I came downstairs right before halftime because I wanted her to go outside to see, like, you're on field level. There's Mm. players right there. And as soon as we walk out, like, the crowd goes nuts. And all of a sudden, I see Carter just, like, streaking down the field. And she's like, what happened? I was like, it's good. It's a good (laughs) play. play. (laughs) Um, Dave defensively what stuck out to you we talked last week about the secondary struggles albeit a different beast with you know the opponent that they were playing but it almost seemed like the secondary played a little bit more comfortable maybe scheme helped out a little bit even though we're missing some studs still in the backfield yeah I thought they competed hard I think that that's the thing that 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 sticks out to you I didn't think they played that great defensively Mm -hmm. to be honest with you I thought they struggled against the run game I thought that it began to wear on them the run game I, will, I do think that the linebacker core continues to play at a high level. Rashawn Evans 
is playing out of this world. I mean, he did a great job on a delay blitz, got home, got a sack. Michael Walker is the guy that forces the play that Lorenzo Carter picks off. Walker gets a delay blitz, gets in the face of P.J. Wa- PJ Walker, gets his hands elevated, and Walker tries to throw it over him and doesn't see low, or doesn't see Zoe standing in behind, and Zoe makes a heck of a play. But they struggled. Uh, they struggled a good bit defensively. I thought they held on to the rope, especially early in the game, because Atlanta started really slow offensively again. Yep. Uh, and there's, a, there's some reasons for that, if we, could, it, we can talk about that. But the defense held the rope early in the game. Yep. And then once, once Zoe made his play, it kind of kick-started the off. For whatever reason, that kind of kick-started the offense in the second half. You got that score you needed right before the end of the half, which was what Arthur was trying to get done on offense and couldn't get it done. And so now it's 14-10 at halftime. You come out and your offense operates at a much higher clip. They shift gears a little bit. They start spreading out a little bit, throwing the ball a little bit. Um, and I thought that was a good thing. Huntley was banging. Um, so, But defensively, I think they still have some places to go. Um, I thought they fought. That's yeah. what I like about them as they continue to fight. Yeah, you talk about struggling against the run. Foreman from Carolina, 26 carries, 118 mm-hmm. yards, three touchdowns on the ground. A couple of them seemed like he kind of just walked into the end zone. Um, in that game, and yeah, that's some of the areas that they struggled. They're going to have to shore up. What did you see defensively, DJ, that you thought was either really good or needs to be shored up? Some of the things that need to be fixed. Well, uh, I thought we still gave up too many explosives. We, we saw it in the week before over Cincinnati, and it kind of Raiders head again this week. And <laughs> if PJ Walker, you know, could you know find a rhythm at all, he had two or three plays that first half where guys were wide open. That could have been big plays. And obviously, you know, coulders and wooders, all, all that kind of stuff. But that just shows you those are the areas where if you play a better quarterback, he's going to hit those plays and it's going to be even more explosive. And talked about starting slower. That could have been put you behind the eight ball really early in the ball game. So you got to gotta, gotta kind of sum up some of the stuff that you're doing on the back end and, and find ways not to let guys be running free into the secondary. Yep. But, again, you got another takeaway. We, we, we talked about that with, with Lorenzo. Uh, I think he had 11 takeaways on the year. And the seventh defender with an interception. I saw that stat, yes. which was pretty cool. Yes, uh, leads the NFL. Um, but also, give some give some credit to uh, to, to Cornell Armstrong on the outside. He had two fade balls against him with uh, Terrence Marshall over there. I thought he defended really well. Was able to knock the ball away because uh, though they definitely were going after him, they were testing him. I thought those were two good plays by him. That uh, you know he's starting to kind of feel it get his foot in here in the second game being able to start dj you said too many explosives dj Moore, obviously we'll get to him a little bit later but six catches 152 yards and he did have a 62 yard catch in that game with a touchdown and the touchdown again we'll talk about it here in a second but dave i want to go back to your point about the offense and getting off to a sluggish start obviously one of the biggest keys that all coaches talk about get off to a fast start whether that's to open the game that's coming out of the halftime break in the third quarter just kind of establishes a tone anything that you're seeing that's got you worried or is it just going to take continual evolution of this offense for them to be able to start fast consistently not to say that that's easy by any means yeah not worried but attention to detail certainly and uh i'll take this the first play of the game you get a you get a nice little play where Kyle comes across in motion. You're going to flip him in the flat. You're going to bootleg off of it. And you're going to get your big timer the ball in the flat with room to run. Yeah. And and Marcus <clears> makes <throat> a poor throw. He throws yeah. it behind a six-foot-six six guy. Now, Kyle will probably be the first guy to tell you I should have caught it, but you're spinning a dude around that's 245 right. pounds. It's six, six. Right. Just hit him on that downfield shoulder and yep. let him roll up the field. Marcus has got to be better in that situation. Mm-hmm. He'd be the first guy to tell you that. Yep. Um I thought that competing, you got to compete for the football too. I, I thought that the throw deep, <sighs> deep to ball, Demir yeah. Bird, Man. you know, Demir was kind of getting his arm pulled down a little bit, so probably was pi. But it almost looked like Demir was the defender and and Jackson was the was the receiver yep. and he intercepted the pass. Yep. So I think some of those things that are very clean, you can very well clean those up. Yep. You know, just be a little bit more attention to detail. Um, because it paid dividends later on. Bird's touchdown comes off of that route. Mm-hmm. He ran the deep post early in the game. We threw the interception. He runs a post curl. He drives up the field and goes to the post. Both defenders fly out, and he hooks it up. Yep. Marcus floats to his right and puts it on him, and now he's got the ball with all sorts of room to run. And then how about the guys blocking for him? London, Pitts, all these guys got awesome. into blocking, and they decreases them in that great speed. That's a pretty cool team concept there, but – 
what you did early in the game, if you're looking for it as fans, you go, why would you do that? Why would you throw it down there? And they weren't trying to get it intercepted, but it did play dividends later on yep. because it created the crease and the hole that DeBird was in on that post-curl route wide open that he gave him the room to run for a touchdown. Well, Carolina saw it on tape a week or two prior. They obviously saw it earlier in the game. They know the scouting report on him with his speed, so it's a good play concept to use his speed to their advantage like get all their shoulders turned the other direction and then like you said turn around and stop you should have a big hole so let's talk a little bit about and maybe this is more kind of a discussion about emotions at the end of the game so I talked about DJ Moore looks like they're gonna win the game right yeah. Carolina scores a touchdown got to kick an extra point they're gonna go up and DJ Moore takes his lid off in celebration gets called for a penalty backs it up it ends up being of what 48, 48. yard extra yeah. point and dj at that moment you are thinking oh we got a great chance because there's a good chance he could miss this yeah. and i think arthur smith was thinking the same thing oh no we're not gonna wait till the kickoff no we don't want to try our chances there let's give this guy a little bit more pressure and it absolutely worked yeah. it is part of the game it's part of having that that option and choice and he took it and it worked out for us so i got i got no problems with that the other thing i'll say this is I think DJ Moore understands he can't do that. But for a lot of people, it's like, how does he do that? <laughs> in an instance, in that moment where he had just dropped the big fourth down play, and he comes back and thinks, man, that's the ball game. And now he gets another opportunity, and he thinks he's won the game for his team. Sometimes your emotions get the best of you, and things happen. So, uh, you know, it, it was tough for them. I'm glad it happened because it gave us a chance to win the ball game. But uh, when you're in the, the heat of the game and you make a monster play, sometimes you may black out. And I think DJ Moore blacked yeah. out at that point by <laughs> taking his helmet off. Might have. All right, <laughs> so then they miss the extra point. We go to overtime, right? Atlanta starts. They get the ball. They start driving down, and Marcus throws a pick. And, Dave, you are thinking – Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Not only that, no, but the no, ball no, 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 no. tackling, tackling. <laughs> yes. As no, he no. ran all the way back down to the twenty-yard line. If you go back and look at the play, uh, Ionitis wins to the inside, and as Marcus is getting ready to try to unload it, he hits him about thigh high, completely blows him up. Yep. So, if you're thinking, okay, what a horrible throw, yeah, because you had three hundred and fifteen pounds wrapped around your waist as you're trying to let it go. Yep. Go back and take a look at that if you if you have an opportunity to look at the tape. Again, another opportunity to compete for the football. And I thought that that was 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 Demir interfered with maybe, but the corner had leverage over the top. They're never going to call that unless it's an underthrow. Yeah. And so he kind of fought through him, and Demir kind of lost his balance, and he picks it off. Yeah. So yeah, at that point you're thinking, um, tackle him. Yeah. Oh no. Right. And um, oh, this no. field position <laughs> that they have. Your head oh, goes no. like this. I was beating my head on the, okay. on, on the desk. All right, so DJ, back to you. <laughs> so after the interception, Carolina runs a couple of plays and outruns Eddie Pinheiro, which looks like it's going to be a chip shot. What was it, 33 yards? Isn't that what we're talking about? As it turns out, an extra point attempt. Yes, which it should have been Ooh. after the touchdown. Oh. So Carolina's lining up for what looks like a chip shot, extra point distance field goal to win the game. And you're thinking? He ain't going to miss it twice. <laughs> ain't, ain't no way he going to miss it again. All right, no he, way, he get a, right? He's getting a second chance. But then there's also like, he did just miss one. So it could be in his brain. We still he might he might try to overcook this thing just yep. a little bit because he's on that hash over there. And when it happened, I said, Oh my God, he just <laughs> missed it. I could not believe it. And I said, Hey, we still got life. All right. So, so Dave, I know you guys have have experimented with a camera in the booth, right? So if we could recreate this camera when he misses the field goal from thirty three yards, you and Wes are doing what in the booth? <laughs> it wasn't even no it was no, inaudible there was, there was, in fact I've seen the footage I didn't do anything I just had to Arch, are you kidding Arch, me were you starting to get your stuff together to get ready to go downstairs I packed my stuff twice <laughs> <laughs> I packed my oh stuff my goodness. I packed my stuff up after Youngway kicked his field goal which yeah. was a mistake yeah. to make it 34-28 yeah. <laughs> and then when DJ when DJ made his deal then um I started putting the rest of my stuff away, and then and then they missed. We went to overtime. I had to start digging my stuff back out. Oh, but anyway, it, it's it, it was a it was a crazy sequence. Um, give in that emotional roller coaster. And I asked Arthur this on Monday in, in his 
in his coach's show. I said, you're a human being. It's like everybody else is that watch at home. Everybody, you got players that are probably riding the emotional roller coaster. Demir Bird told me, yeah, we, he said, I thought we, I thought it was over. And then I thought, oh, shoot, we got another chance. And then, oh, damn, we don't yeah. have another chance. <laughs> and so he was doing the same thing we were doing. Yep. I asked, yep. and he was cold as an assassin. Nah, man, I'm looking over on my play sheet. I'm getting ready for the next play to call and stuff. Yeah. You know, and he just was completely – and that's who you got as your head coach, folks. Yeah, I mean, this dude crazy. is man. thinking he, – he doesn't let anything bother him. He's to the next step. I asked him – I said, well, you called timeout when Pinheiro came out. He says, that was the only thing I had left to do. Yeah. You know, I ch- I'd gone through my pl- checklist. The only thing I had left to do was burn a timeout there and make him think about it. Yep. You know, but he's thinking about that. And, and then when the miss went, boom, he immediately had the thought process in place as to what they want to do offensively to go win the football game, how aggressive they wanted to be. He says, nobody wants to go home with a tie. Right. There's only like two minutes left. we got to go yep. win the game. Yep. You know? And then Marcus makes an unbelievable play on the zone read to get you in field goal. So, DJ, here's my last one. Man, okay? Awesome. So, Marcus Mariota scrambles for 30 yards, gets deep into Carolina territory, and you are thinking... <laughs> I, I, I believe in my guy. I didn't seen Coop do this before. Right. And I was like, oh, ball game. So as he <laughs> ran out of bounds, and I saw Marcus with the emotional, you know, going crazy over there. You, you see Marcus had that kind of yeah. uh, fire about him. And then Coop comes running out. I, ball game. I knew. I, I'll be honest, 100%. In my heart, I knew Koo would knock that thing yeah. down because we've seen it happen so many times and we believe in Koo. So I was glad to see it happen. Uh, glad to see Koo come out and bang that thing through and uh, send Carolina home uh, with the sad face. One more quick thing. My daughter says, Dad, what do you think is going to happen here? I said, this one's going through, no babe. Doubt. He ain't missing this. No I'm doubt. sorry. I mean, just you just kind of think about it, like the chances they ended up getting. And, and Young Way Koo is just so chill, right? Yeah. He just doesn't look like he ever gets overwhelmed by the moment, and he steps up and nails it. So we kind of went through some emotions there. Oh, I thought crazy. we'd have fun with a little bit yeah, because that's emotion. what that's what even people that, that are part yeah. of the organization, that's what I'm sure all the fans were feeling. Uh, but it's fun to be able to come out of that one with an overtime win, as you mentioned, and not a tie. So- this episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search, so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. Arch, let me come back to you. Let's fast forward to next week. Chargers coming to town. Where, how do you see this one shaking out? Because I like how you've, the last couple of weeks, we talked about Cincinnati. Uh, Carolina, <laughs> pretty good chances here. They got a good defense. Yeah, man, so, so like what? That. Maybe it was after that week. That's what she felt. All right. So, give us kind of a breakdown of what Atlanta's going to see this week. Yeah, you're going to need to possess the football in this game um, because this guy, a quarterback's legit. Yes, you're sir. talking about one of the one of the six, seven best quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think Justin Herbert's got all of that. Now, is he going to get his receivers back? Mike Williams has been hurt. Keenan Allen's been banged up. There's some talk that Allen will be back and ready to play. I don't know if Williams will be ready to go. Eckler is a guy that's a problem in the run game and oh the, and, and yes. the pass game. Yeah. Um, this is a good offense. They're struggling stopping the run defensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, mightily stopping the run. Okay, so this is one of those games where if you're ever going to bang on somebody for the tune about 35, 36 minutes with the time of possession, yep. this is the game you want to do that. Yeah. So it kind of plays into strengths of what Atlanta does, what they want to do, um, keep the football out of the air, meaning not try to throw the ball 30 to 40 times and use these this tandem of running backs and your quarterback – to, don't forget CP is going to be back. Yeah. You can bank on the fact. I mean, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag or anything like that. But I don't out, think, baby. <laughs> well, I don't, th- I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, they have to make that decision. They have yeah. not made that decision. Right. They get to make that on Wednesday or whenever to pull We're him so off IR. Back. He's mm-hmm. coming off IR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can get ready. CP will be back in the lineup this week. I'm going to break that right now. And I nobody's told me that. <laughs> I didn't talk to Arthur Smith about that. I didn't talk to Terry Fontenot about that. CP will be back, baby. <laughs> 
Arch is doing what you call going out on a limb. And it might be a really small one, but he's going out on it like, saying CP is like back. And, I, and, and look, I hope right. he is, and I hope he's feeling great, and I hope he's rested, look, and I hope he's ready to he go He looked good over from his Twitter people. videos. I know that. <laughs> Twitter video, he rolling. What sticks out to you in this matchup? What needs to happen <laughs> in Atlanta's favor for them to come away with a win? Well, when we played the Browns, there was one guy who had an accident and obviously didn't play in the game. And we're so glad he didn't. Yeah. Well, this game, they got a dude who might be just as good in Khalil Mack. We got to get him blocked up. That's for one. Because he can be a game wrecker in so many different ways. And we talked about being able just to, to lean on him in a, in a run game. I hope so. Because then that, you know, maybe slows him down a little bit. But he always finds a way uh, to get to the quarterback. He's done it his entire career. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's one of those guys. I mean, Duran James is another on the back end. He's got two sacks as well. Really good play on the back end. I've uh, been watching him since he came in. And Arch mentioned Eckler, man. Eckler has got 53 receptions leading the team. Yeah. I mean, from the running back spot. Yeah. So that tells you, goes back to the Tampa game when Fournette had 10 catches in that ball game. It was just simple little just check down, check down, check down. Well, this guy is way different than Leonard Fournette. You give him space for a check down, there's a chance he can go with it. There's a chance he's going to make a lot of big plays. So we have to be conscious of where he is at all times in the run game and pass game. And Arch talked about the linebackers have really played well. Well, this is going to be a similar game where you got a guy like an Alvin Kamara who, if he gets a ball in space, makes things happen. Makes things happen. Yeah. Arch, I want to come back to you with one last question. For the fans that are that are listening and watching, is there anything that Atlanta – I mean, they're not going to talk about this, but from your perspective, Chargers coming off a bye week, okay? Does that help them? Does it hurt them? Obviously, they get more chance to look at Atlanta. They get more chance to potentially get people back. But them coming off a of bye week, Atlanta not. Any – does it factor into the equation at all? I always liked being able to come off of a, a rest week, especially if you're a team that's banged up and you've got veteran players yeah. and they have veteran players. But, I mean, I think if you throw it up in the air, it kind of comes down pretty close to even as yeah. to who wins these games. You're on a roll. You've won three straight in your own building. All of a sudden it starts – it's now feeling like Atlanta mm -hmm. Falcons home field and the advantage. The fans are digging it. Um, you're going to get this team in here in this building. This is not a place they're familiar with. Yeah. All of that stuff factors in, and I think it helps Atlanta. But I don't know that there's a, a, a distinct advantage either way. So, potentially getting CP back positive – uh, Got to get a couple block guys blocked on defense, okay? Sure. That's obviously um, going to be key in this one. Run the football um, and um, come away with another victory. Sounds like uh, a plan to me. Like By the way, Chargers come into this one four and three, sitting second in their current their division behind the Chiefs right now. And I mentioned they are coming off a bye week. So, and then just a refresher: Falcons four and four, number one in the division. Tampa Bay sitting behind them at three and five. Real quick, let me ask you this. You ever did you see that one coming before the season? Not necessarily Atlanta at number one, but Tampa struggling at three and five right now. No, I didn't. I mean, uh, I, you know, once they had a couple guys go down up front, then you started to see, okay, well, this is not the same team. Obviously, yeah. you got the same kind of characters on the outside, but as we've stressed, if you don't have the big five guys up front, it doesn't matter what kind of skill guys you have. It doesn't matter really how good everybody else is. If you can't get them blocked up, you ain't got time to throw it. You don't have any room to run it. So then it starts to, okay, well, this is why they're struggling. And it's ultimately the reason why they aren't. One other thing I'll say uh, before we wrap up. Get the ball to Kyle Pitts this week so yep. he can. <laughs> don't like discount that for Tampa. Gronkowski yeah. not playing for them is a big yeah, deal. Yeah, huge deal. For sure. I mean, huge that deal. was a safety blanket for Brady. He's not getting it to him. We exactly. got our guy here that wants to first down. <laughs> See? You got the little hesitation. I know. Bounce. Little bounce. I just, the, the fire that he had. Like I just, <laughs> I was like, I feel you, young fella. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. We appreciate you watching on whichever platform you do, AtlantaFalcons.com, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week just we like we are each and every week. This is my man, DJ Shockley, Dave Archer. I'm Derek Rackley. Big We're Rack. signing out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Go um, dogs. Go dogs. For <laughs> sure. <show. laughs>